Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for me to welcome you back to yet another FIFA 17 ratings prediction video. Now so far in this series we've worked our way down the Barclays Premier League table, we've had three episodes so far, today it's the fourth which means we look at the team that f finished fourth in the BPL, uh, which is of course Manchester City now. Uh, going into this one, uh, I realise my ratings so far have been quite controversial, so I've tried to focus, even look at some stats here and there, and try and actually come up with an even more re like more realistic ratings prediction than the likes of Leicester and Arsenal. Tottenham, I think, was taken okay, but Tottenham and Arsenal perhaps not so. Uh, if you do go on to enjoy the video, though, feel free to hit the likes button, subscribe if you're new around here and all that good stuff, but uh, I suppose it's time to get into it, I guess. Uh, you guys probably know the structure by now. I'll uh, take you through the players individually in terms of um, position by position, and then we'll look at an overview of the team as I predicted it in comparison to an overview of the team uh, when uh, yeah, from the start of FIFA 16. There we go. Um, so compare my predictions to the, the squad at the start of FIFA 16, and we'll look at some more bench players, and then that'll be it. So um, I suppose we should start off with a goalkeeper. I suppose that is um, fairly logical. Fairly logical step. And of course, City's goalkeeper is Joe Hart. Now, for him, he was 84 overall at the start of FIFA 16. I've actually predicted a plus one upgrade on him. Partly because I think he should be 85 anyway, but also because he has had a very good season. You know, I know City have underachieved somewhat, but Joe Hart's been pulling out some good stops. He's made a few mistakes, but still, I do actually think he's pretty criminally underrated um, in terms of BPL goalkeepers. So, you know, the likes of De Gea and stuff being miles above him. Joe Hart is a very good goalkeeper, so I've gone for him uh, to be given a plus one upgrade. Uh, and of course, he will probably keep 85 as his potential, given he's you know not the youngest of goalkeepers. After that, though, we've got the right back, and that is Pablo Zabaleta, the Argentinian right back. Um, haven't really seen anything from him to suggest he'll get a downgrade, though I know he was being kept out of the side by Bakary Sanya. Uh, for a little bit, but I, I think he'll probably just keep 82. He's fairly old as far as footballers go, so he's probably going to keep 82 as a potential, if that's the case. You never know, he might get a downgrade if EA are feeling particularly harsh, but I don't really feel as if there's a need um, to. And that's sort of the story across the whole back four, in all honesty. Vincent Company, I was toying... Um, sorry, Vincent Company is the, is the first of centre-backs. I was toying, though, with giving him an upgrade. Um... But I don't know. I think centre-backs are just sort of rated quite harshly anyway. I mean, Gerard Piquet is 85. Um, Thiago Silva's really the main uh, centre-back. Maybe company should get 86. That's my opinion he should get 86. Whether he'll get 86, I don't think so. Um, I would be very surprised if he doesn't get the injury-prone trait after this season, though. And again, he will keep the potential of 85, which is, of course, his starting overall, as I predicted it. Uh, Nicolas Otamendi, his centre-back partner, um, hasn't had... The, I don't know, he's he's been alright, he hasn't set the world alight, but he hasn't, like, been, like, dreadful. Um, so I've gone for him to keep 84 and have a potential of 84 as well. Um, he might actually have potential to grow realistically, actually thinking about that now, because I don't think he's the oldest of centre-backs, maybe he'll have potential on Karimo to grow by one or two, you never know. Um, but I've gone for 84 as his starting overall, that's the main thing. And then to complete the defence, we've got Gail Clichy, uh, 80 overall. Uh, again, is my prediction for him, which is, of course, the same overall that he had at FIFA 16. Um, and again, he's a fairly old player like Zabaleta and the ones before him. So he's probably going to keep 80 uh, as his highest potential in career mode, unless you want to train him. But why you train Gael Clichy is beyond me. Nevertheless, that's not the point. We now move on to the midfield. And um, from now on in, we've got a lot of change, to be honest. Well, not a lot of change, but change for everyone. Um, Fernandinho is the first player. Um, a pretty underrated player, as far as I'm concerned. Even if even I don't really... There's been times where I haven't rated him, but actually you think about it and he does his job very well. He scored some crucial goals, so I've given him a plus one upgrade from 80 to 81. You always look at Manchester City fans and they always seem to appreciate Fernandinho, whereas maybe um, fans of opposition clubs don't so much. So based on that, I would get the feeling that uh, from what I've seen, plus that factor, is that he's actually performed very well and his stats have been pretty decent as well. So I've gone for a plus one upgrade for him. Um, and of course he'll keep the potential of 81 because again, he's not the youngest of players. Alongside him though in central midfield, Yaya Torre. Now I feel as if this is probably the most contra controversial prediction that I've done in this whole video. Um, but I've gone for a minus one on him, so a, a downgrade of one from 85 to 84. And to be honest, he's had a really poor season. I don't think he's actually 84 rated ability. I think he should have had a higher overall last FIFA. 
So what would be ideal if, is if he was 86 on FIFA 16, and then I'd give him a downgrade to 85 on FIFA 17. Um, but he's been quite poor, to be honest with you, apart from scoring the odd worldy goal. He has been poor across the whole season. I think he's going to leave City this summer. Um, so they have to give him a downgrade just purely because he's been poor, even if that rating doesn't really reflect his true ability. But uh, obviously, again, potential of 84, because again, like a lot of the players before him, he's quite old as far as footballers go. Uh, after that, then we move on to the wingers. Raheem Sterling. Uh, with a heavy heart, I've given Raheem Sterling an upgrade. As you probably know, I'm a Liverpool fan, so I don't particularly have the highest of regards for Raheem Sterling, but he has been solid this season. Not quite the standard that he was a few seasons ago at Liverpool. Um, I still don't think he's been very, very good this season, but I think he deserves an overall higher than 82. And he's developed a little bit this season. He has been quite good, especially in the first half. He got two in form, so, you know, based on that, his stats are all right. I suppose he should get an upgrade. Now, 87 potential I've gone for him, because finally we've got a very young player in this squad. Um, so that's a potential to grow by four in Karima, because I do believe he's about 21 or 22. That would make kind of a lot of sense. 87's probably the highest potential he'd get to anyway, so I reckon that's about fair. So a plus one upgrade for Sterling and 87 potential. After that, David Silva. It's a bit of up and down at the moment because I've gone for a downgrade for David Silva. Again, his stats have been alright, but he just hasn't been as good as he was the last few seasons. And that's, it's not, I think sometimes you've got to forget the stats a little bit and just actually look at how they played when you watch them. Has David Silva been as good as De Bruyne this season? Not even slightly, from my perspective. So, I've given him a minus one uh, from 88 to 87. So, he's still pretty high rated, to be honest. But I've just gone for 87 for him. He'll probably have a left mid card as well. I know I put attacking mid on the screen, but it'll probably be left mid, given where he plays the majority of the time for City these days. And then a potential of 87. After that, De Bruyne, we're going back up. This guy's got an upgrade. The Belgian has been very, very, very good this season. And if I think he'd, if he'd been fit all season, I think City could have won the league to be honest, but he spent quite a lot of time on the injury sidelines, unfortunately. But I give him an upgrade nonetheless, uh, nonetheless sorry, from 86 to 87, and a potential to grow to 89 in career, because he's still fairly young. That might be a little bit optimistic, maybe he'll only grow by one in career mode, but sometimes players who are like 24, 25, do still grow by one or two in career mode, not by much, but by a little bit. So, gone for a potential of 89 for Kevin De Bruyne, who's had a really, really solid season. How he didn't get a team of the season is to be honest, beyond me, but he's been fantastic, so that's that's lovely. Kevin De Bruyne with an upgrade, and after that, another upgrade for Sergio Aguero. He was 88 at the start of FIFA 16. I've gone for him to get a plus one upgrade to 89. Obviously, his potential will probably stay the same at 89, because he's about 27, I think, 26 is Aguero, something like that. So, a plus one upgrade then for Aguero to go along with the upgrade for De Bruyne, and uh, yeah, I think that's about fair. Aguero has needed an upgrade to like 89 for flipping ages. He's just been so good for so long. He deserves to be like 89 rated. So I've gone for the plus one upgrade on him. Uh, now though, you're going to see a contrast between what I've predicted and also the squad that, uh, that City had at the start of FIFA 16. In the background at the moment, you are seeing um, the full top, the, the starting 11 that I've predicted for FIFA 17. And now you're going to see that comparison to how the squad looked in FIFA 16. Again, like Arsenal, a lot of ups and downs. The likes of Fernandinho, Sterling, Hart, De Bruyne, Aguero all going up. But then also Torre and, De Bru um, Torre and Silva, sorry going down. So there's a bit of a mixture. Again, players that are also staying the same, aka the whole back four. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully that's fair. Again, drop your opinions and thoughts in the comments section as to the starting level what you would have changed and uh, maybe what your career potential predictions are for those players too. But just for the, f uh, the last few minutes, sorry, of this video, we're going to look at some of the bench players and some of the other sort of reserve players um, at City as well. Talk about them a little bit more briefly, but go through them nonetheless. And the first player is Elikin Mangala, the centre-back from France. Again, much like Otamendi, he of course signed for City this season, has been a little bit lacklustre, but I don't think he deserves a downgrade to anything below 80, so I'm going to leave him at 80, with the potential to grow to around about 84, maybe it'll be 83, who knows, I think as far as I'm aware he's still young, don't hate me if he's not, because I don't really know his age, but I, I could swear he's still quite young, so maybe it'll be lower than that, but I've still gone for a starting overall potential um, prediction sorry, of 80. After that is Martin de Michaelis. Um, he was 81 at the start of FIFA 16, but he's been absolutely dreadful this season, let's be honest. And he's aging as well, which is always a key factor in EA's um, prediction sort of or ratings um, 
decisions. Um, so I've gone for a minus 2 on him from 81 to 79 and a potential of 79. Um, then we've got Alexander Kolarov, a little bit more boring than, than um, Dimichaelis. Uh, he was 79 at the start of FIFA 16. I've kept him at 79. He's been alright this season. He scored some bangers, but Kolarov always does that. He's pretty poor defensively, but he's alright going forward. I wouldn't say he's been phenomenally better than he has in recent seasons, so I've left him at 79. After that, Fernando, who, unlike Fernandinho, has been pretty poor this season. Uh, he was 79 at the start of FIFA 16, so I've given him a potential, um, sorry, a prediction of 78, which is now a downgrade then for him of 1, and then a potential of 78, because he's 27. He's not going to grow in FIFA career mode, is he really? Um, after that is Fabian Delph, someone who's been a bit... I was actually toying with the idea of giving him an upgrade, because I think Delph's actually been alright this season from when he's played, but um, I've left him at 77 because I don't think he's played quite enough really, but when he has played, he's looked pretty solid, he got in the provisional side for England, rightly or wrongly, so I've given him a potential of 79 as sort of a halfway house to um, not getting an upgrade, but um, still being able to grow in career mode by two. After that is Jesus Navas, who I've left the same at 81. He was uh, 81 at the start of FIFA career mode, um, or at the start of FIFA 16 even, um, and I've left him at 81. I apologise for so many mistakes, I'm quite tired to be honest at the moment, as you can probably tell. Um, but yeah, Jesus Navas, leaving him at 81, and then the potential of 81 as well in career mode. Then we've got Patrick Roberts, someone who I think is on loan as far as, as, far as I'm aware at Celtic. Um, but he'll come back to City eventually, right? Um, so I've given him a, a prediction as well, as I'm probably not going to get onto Celtic at any stage. Um, he was 67 at the start of FIFA 16, or after the upgrade, I can't remember, but he was 67, uh, was his last rating. I've given him a plus 3 upgrade to 70, and then a potential of 82. Because uh, he's fairly young and he, you know, he seems as if he might grow. And Sami Nasri left him at 83. His potential in Chromo will be 83 as well, as uh, in terms of my prediction. He was 83 at the start of FIFA 16, so there's no change for him. Then Kalichi Ihanacho, someone who's really, really done well as a young player for City this season. He was 70 in the most recent January update, but I think before that he was 67. I've given him a plus 4 upgrade from 70 to 74, with a potential of 86 in Karimo. That's the biggest growth in terms of starting overall to potential that we have in this video so far. And then after that, the final player is Wilfred Bonny. Continuing the up and down theme, uh, Wilfred Bonny, in my opinion, is getting a downgrade of 2 to 79. That might be a bit harsh. They might give him 80. He was 81 at the start of FIFA 16, but he's not really been fantastic whatsoever this season. So I've decided to give him a minus 2 uh, to 79. But uh, that basically concludes then my predictions for FIFA 17 for Manchester City. Again, if you have any thoughts or any disagreements, then drop them in the comments section. I would love to hear them. Like and subscribe if you're new around here as well. And uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.